The cold northern reaches of Siberia, where temperatures can plummet all the way down to negative 50 degrees below freezing, have provided us a treasure trove of ancient remains. During the last ice age, this region was home to magnificent and iconic megabeasts. Over the past few decades, paleontologists have uncovered the mummified remains of these once prolific animals. Mummies of woolly mammoths, woolly rhinos, steppe bison, and even cave lion cubs have all been found here, giving us a unique window into the prehistoric past. And now, for the first time in history, we finally have mummified remains from a species of saber-toothed cat. The specific species of saber-toothed cat in question is Homotherium, the most successful of this lineage. The last known individual went extinct 11,000 years ago in the Americas. These new remains of a mummified Homotherium cub date around 31,000 years ago and give us a look into this extinct predator like never before. Machairodons, colloquially known as saber-toothed cats, are the most recognizable predators of the Ice Age. What many people don't realize is that saber-toothed cats aren't considered true cats at all. In fact, Machairodons diverged from the ancestors of modern cats around 20 to 15 million years ago. This means that the Homotherium mummy is the first time in history where we have the remains of an animal with no modern-day analogs. The most famous genus of Machairodont is none other than the Smilodon. With its large protruding dagger-like fangs, this massive Machairodont ruled from North America to South America and is represented by three species. Perhaps the most famous species of Smilodon is Smilodon fatalis. This species in particular is especially well known to science, thanks to over 2,000 individuals found from the La Brea tar pits. While it's not as famous as its iconic cousin, Homotherium was by far the most successful of the group. Its range extended all throughout Africa, Eurasia, and the Americas during the last ice age, with this new mummy representing the most recently dated specimen from Asia. Since Homotherium had much shorter fangs than Smilodon, it has been hypothesized that its saber teeth were covered by lips. While this is still an ongoing debate in science, unfortunately, the new mummy doesn't shed enough light on the matter due to the cub's young age. It was far too young to develop those iconic saber teeth. However, the mummy has revealed quite a lot about these animals nonetheless. By analyzing the cub's anatomy and comparing it to modern-day lion cubs, scientists determined that it was just three weeks old at the time of death. The Homotherium cub's nasal bones are shortened and widened, and its brain case is noticeably larger. These adaptations hint at an advanced sense of smell and a brain better equipped for hunting and survival in the harsh, colder climates. This mummy also gives us a look at both its soft tissue and coat covering. This young animal showed a deep copper hue to its fur. There's even a patch of lighter colored fur under the chin, which we'll get to shortly. Of course, it is also worth mentioning that the coloration of the fur might actually be due to the mummification process, and not necessarily the animal's true color in life. The cub's forelimbs were completely preserved, and showed that these animals had elongated limbs compared to modern-day big cats even at younger ages. The front paw of the Homotherium cub mummy still has preserved foot pads and claws. The paw lacks a carpal pad, which most big cats have. The paws are much wider and round compared to lion cubs, perhaps helping the animal traverse through snowy terrain. The ears of the Homotherium cub are low and form a subtle, semicircular shape that barely extends beyond the head's outline. The upper lip of the Homotherium cub is significantly larger than that of a lion cub. This increased lip height likely evolved to accommodate the future growth of the long upper canines, providing coverage as they develop. Additionally, the Homotherium cub's mouth opening is around 15% wider than a lion cub's, meaning it had a broader gape. This mouth size difference supports the idea that Homotherium's anatomy was optimized for a powerful bite and wide mouth suited for its role as a top predator. The neck of the mummy is longer and more than twice as thick as a modern-day lion cub at the same age, further supporting that these animals had rather robust builds in adulthood. And lastly, we gotta talk about the beard. You see, Machairodonts like Homotherium have a more pronounced, absolute chad chin not seen in modern-day big cats. And this baby was no different. Under its chad chin, 
there seems to be a tuft of lighter color fur. This could be a feature specific to younger cubs, or perhaps this is something they carried on into adulthood. Genetic analysis, along with the age of the specimen, led researchers to classify the mummy as Homotherium latidens. This mummy was discovered near the Bajarka River in Yakutia, Russia, making it the second instance of Homotherium latidens in Eurasia and the first in Asia. Skull and body features of the cub resemble those found in adult Homotherium and the juvenile specimen from the Freisenhan cave, further confirming its species identification. Homotherium's appearance and muscular structure, particularly its robust neck and forelimbs, have long been debated. The new mummy supports robust reconstructions, and the neck in particular was much thicker than that of modern lions, even at such a young age. At only three weeks old, the cub already displayed characteristic adult features, including long forelimbs, a robust neck, and a large mouth gape, suitable for wide bites. Its front paws were wide and rounded, with pads adapted to snow. All of these suggest that even at a young age, these animals had some seriously strong adaptations to tough out the colder Ice Age world. The study of the mummy of the Homotherium latidens cub made it possible for the first time to observe the soft tissue of an animal with no living analogs in excellent detail. This study brings a lot of answers to the animal's life appearance and can raise some interesting questions too. For instance, since Homotherium had such a wide range, is it possible that members of the genus and even same species who lived in warmer climates like in Africa may have differed from their northern counterparts? Did the tufts of the lighter colored fur under the chad chins grow out as decorative manes? And could the discovery of an adult mummy prove whether or not these cats had protruding fangs? There is always still much to learn about our prehistoric past, but one thing is for certain, this has got to be one of the most groundbreaking discoveries in Pleistocene paleontology. And hey, at least we got the first saber-toothed cat mummy ever before we got Grand Theft Auto 6. Fingers crossed we get a short-faced bear mummy next.